right, good afternoon. Uh, so we finished off today with our uh, mock Friday. Um, so uh, just want to credit the players for this week. I thought they did a nice job of preparing on first and second down day, and then also the, the third down and two-minute day yesterday, and also the red zone day today. So they, they did a nice job. Uh, today where we were just in you know helmets and shells there and the guys we wanted to be a fast Friday you know uh, and a fast focus Friday so they did a nice job with that and uh, mostly gold zone and red zone type situations today a little bit of backed up situations and we finished off with move the ball so I thought the operation was good it was clean we didn't have a lot of penalties in there so it was good motion shifts were clean so we're looking forward to this uh, you know traveling up to Cleveland and uh, going through the hotel you know, experience there again for the second time. I thought last time, like I said, was really good. Uh, you guys are focused in the meetings and you know, we're trying a little bit dif different operation this time. We're gonna do a uh, meetings at night because we have a night game and then do a longer walkthrough the day of the game. So that's a little bit different. Sometimes you do all in one night and then don't do anything the day of the game. So we'll have a walkthrough uh, day of the game at the hotel there, which will be good. Uh, I'll open it up to questions from there. Matt, uh, Tuesday's practice, which would normally be your Wednesday yeah. game week, pads were on. It was pretty physical practice. Yep. Is, is that what you envisioned during the season, or is that more just still because it's August? Yeah, so, you know, you're allowed to do that so many weeks, and then when you, when you have to stop, you stop. Um, so we're going to utilize that. Uh, we mm -hmm. always look at the health of the team uh, with that, but that is our plan. Uh, so the peak day there is Wednesday, where you come off, you have two days off, and then you uh, basically, and then you come back Wednesday and get a pad, padded practice. It doesn't always have to be that way. You can slide your scale uh, to the peak day, to the Thursday if you'd like. You can go shells on Wednesday, lighter day that day, and then when you go first, second, third down on Thursday, you can have a peak day there with the pads on. So, uh, and that's just all based on where you are in the schedule. And I think you got to be mindful of that when your bye week's at 14, week 14, you know, and then you have a little mini bye there with our Thursday game with the Monday game after that. So, um, yeah, you got to be mindful of it. How important is it for you and this hits principle that you're stressing to maintain that physicality throughout the regular season as much as you're allowed. No, that's important. That's important. You, you know, I call it being pad ready. You got to be able to get your pads down. Um, and as soon as you don't do that, you, you start playing high and you lose the line of scrimmage. So, um, you know, one of the important parts of football is winning the line of scrimmage and on both sides. So I think that's an important piece to it where you have to stay in pads and you have to do that. And the guys know that. You got to stay sharp that way. For some of the guys that are fighting for some of the final spots in the roster, they obviously know this is their last chance in a game, but do you have a special message for them or anything about how to make the most of your opportunity here? Do you talk to them about that? Yeah, I mean, it's, this, is a, this is a time in the NFL, you know, where the last cuts are coming, and, you know, there's going to be a bunch of guys that, that don't make it across the whole league, you know, and, and uh, some of those guys were great college players, you know, and some of them, you know, had bounced around the league a little bit, and this may be their final final to do, you know. So I always feel for those guys. Um, I always say, hey, put your best foot forward and apply what you learned. If this is the last football for you, apply what you learned in the game of football. And when you were here, okay, maybe we uh, imparted some wisdom to you and use that in life. You know, use that going forward in your relationships. Use it going forward in your business and uh, in the rest of the way you go. So um, that's my message to them. And it's, it's always difficult because you build a relationship with those guys and it's always uh, difficult to say goodbye. Short of, you know, Brisker and Harry and, and, you know, the guys we know are out, is there anybody you've ruled out for Saturday? Um, just the guys that we've talked about that have been out. You know, that's those are the guys that right now we're just looking to see where some guys are. And, again, I'm not going to name names right now of who's out and who's in. With Byron, with Byron Pringle in particular, is there a time he needs to be out on the practice field for you to be comfortable with him? Yeah, I mean, you know, that's we, – we obviously the closer – the sooner the better. You know, the sooner the better, we'll feel more comfortable. You know, he's got to get in there and get the game plan and get ready to go. So we're hopeful that he can do that. So we'll see where he is, and uh, we'll see what the training staff says. With receiver, is, is that an easier or harder position to jump back in uh, and make up for lost time in, as opposed to somewhere else? Mm, I, I think they're all hard. I think when you lose time on the grass, it's always hard to come back. You know, and I told Byron and I told the guys that are out, even Harry, that, hey, so you have to stay locked into the game plan. You really do, and you have to have uh, you know visualization uh, during the course at night to go through the plays to make sure you know how to align, how to assign, 
and how to do your job in that particular place. So uh, those guys have got to be on it mentally uh, when they're here in the building, but also at night to do the plays at night too in their mind. That Adam was just talking about. It seemed like Roquan Smith kind of set the tone for that early. That first play of team, he shot through the gap, put a pretty solid tackle on David Montgomery. Does your defense feel different just having him out there? We heard Jalen say the confidence is a little bit different when he's there. Does it, to you, does it feel different when 58 on the field? Yeah, well, I, like I said the other day, whenever you increase your talent level on uh, that side of the ball, really any side of the ball, you're going to see a little different. It's going to be a little bit different, and you certainly felt that. We all felt that. You guys saw it when he was out there playing. You know, on that toss sweep and then, you know, the zone play. So, um, you know, he's certainly an impactful player. And we've said that all along. He's a, he's a really good player. So. It was about a week ago that you guys moved Tevin to guard, and he had about a minute to think about it before you put him in that preseason game. How did he look on that film? How has he kind of embraced the role and, and maybe improved over the last week or so? Yeah, I think he's just, you know, like you, anything with more experience, you know, you feel more comfortable. And I think he's getting there. You know, he's starting to feel more comfortable. Um, you know, we all had a hard practice on Wednesday, you know, so he had to push through that as well. And then I think he got his legs back under him, you know, yesterday, and, and it was a little bit better today. So, yeah, he's feeling more comfortable as he goes. And with 70 some guys uh, will likely be out there, how much of your eye will be on fields? And, and what are you, as the head coach, wanting to look for as opposed to just kind of taking Getsy's word for it that he's, you know, coming along? What, what, what are you looking for when you when Yeah, you're... just, you know, poise, uh, execution. You know, running the offense, you know, having command, presence out there, um, him doing his thing. And then we're just excited to get him more in there, more comfortable. You know, he's a young player, and uh, this is a, a, a big game experience for him that he's going to have prior to the start of the season. And uh, he's excited about it. He's excited about getting out there and doing it. Just in general, what's your comfort level with his progress base? You know, being the head coach, you got so many things to watch. What's your comfort level with, with where he's at right now, especially relative to maybe what you thought when you – Inherited him. Yeah, I think we're all excited where he is right now with what he's doing on the offensive side of the ball and, and what he's doing with the offense, and we feel good about it. Do you, have, do you have a pretty good idea of what the starting offensive line is going to look like for the season opener, and how much can what happens Saturday still play into that? Yeah, I think we're still in that evaluation mode um, with the offensive line. Um, you know, we're still looking at a lot of guys. Uh, we're still looking at the combinations. I know we're kind of solidified, you know, as of late. Uh, the recent one that's been out there, and but we're still this thing is still open, the competition is still open. So everybody's got to put their best foot forward. They got to perform, you know, this Saturday, and they got they have to you know get it done on the field. The play, the catch near the sideline last week against the Seahawks that didn't get challenged. Yeah. I'm just curious when you guys got back here, when you guys got to look at the film, talk yeah. about that as a staff, like take away from that that you learned. Yeah, you always do post evaluation of all situations, you know. So you know. We didn't, like I said, after the in, in the media there, uh, we, we didn't get a good look. We got one look, and a couple guys on the sideline said it bounced on the ground. Um, so I was like, okay, well, let's let it go. Um, but then I said also, you know, if that's a, a regular season, you, you might you might throw it there, you know, because what's it cost you? You know, it costs you a timeout. You know, no big deal. But if if I told the players this, that, hey, if Isaiah said, hey, I caught that thing, you know, come over to me and, and tell me. Because I, I always said this, I told the players this today, is that you get your best information from the players because they're out there. Because you're looking at pictures a lot of times, you're looking at real-time action, you don't get a good replay. The players give you the best information because they're out there. And I, I said, hey, you got to tell me yes, no, or, or I'm not sure, coach. You know, and then just go from there and just be honest. Just have an honest conversation, and that will help us discern and help us to figure out what we want to do with challenges, or you know, particularly you know, or fixing plays. You know, you're out there, you know, blocking schemes or what they're doing to us, offense and defense. So that'll help us. With, with, with Kyle Gordon, we all know that rookie mistakes happen, and you know, to the best of them. What about him leads you to think that he can either minimize those or avoid those? What, what mistakes are you talking about? We all know that rookie mistakes. Are Oh, you're saying generally? Yeah, generally. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I thought, all right. And what about Kyler Leach? Do you think that he can have as few of those as possible? No, I just think he's a confident guy. I, th I think we've said it before where he, he likes to try things and he likes to you know, uh, adjust his techniques, and, and he is a very confident guy because he's, he's a good player. And he's done a lot of things and a lot of success over his career. So he's, he knows that, hey, we're going to have adversity, and it's how you respond to adversity that matters, right? So, you know, it's the NFL. You're always, everybody's going to get beat. Right? It's how do you respond to the next play that matters. 
you got to reset, cycle of the snap, and then go forward and keep moving. Because in, in the course of a game, you got to adjust, adapt, overcome as a as a player and also as a unit as a football team, you know, to get it done. So, um, yeah, he's in a good spot. Matt, when, there, first, when did you first come up with the idea for hits? I don't think we've ever asked you just like the origin of it. When? Yeah, I mean, it was really when I was with Rod. Um, you know, I was with, I was in Dallas, and Rod uh, and I got together. I think it was 2013 or 14, somewhere in there. I think Rod took over in 2014. And, you know, the impact that he had on me, because I would look at his drills and how he did uh, his thing with the defensive line, because he was defensive coordinator and coaching defensive line at the time. And I said, well, shoot, this guy's a master coach. I said, I'm going to I'm gonna try to be as good as him and, and, and do it his way. And then I was like, you know what, I'm going to come up with, a, with something that I can measure you know, so I can give immediate feedback to the players. And so everything is measured, you know, so every play, every detail. So, you know, when I talk about, you know, how the intensity part of it, well, I started measuring the last three yards. So from contact, you know, from player tackling to hitting the player running, running the ball, I measured that last three yards. I want to see an acceleration to and through, okay, and then a hamstring tackle after that. So that's one way we would measure it. You know, it's like the, well, the low system's been around since the Bucks, but, um, you know, the detail of that. So I wanted to do that with the hustle and the intensity part of it. And then the strip attempts. You know, are you really stripping it every play? Not just sticking your hand out there to appease me, but are you really going after it? And, you know, we coach that every single play, and it's all measured. So you can coach details every single play. And what you'll see is that when you do it offense, defense, and kicking, your, your team will, will understand the exact standards because everything's on the table. You, you don't hide anything. It's like, well, you got to end strip attempt. I'm just going to let that go. No, we're not going to let that go. You got to get a strip attempt there. This is how you're going to do it. And uh, the players have bought into it. And, you know, we'll see where the buy in is. You know, we'll see it. We got to see it. We're only good as our last performance. We'll see what we do this performance. Was it? Pretty easy to come up with the acronym for it. Like, did you know? I mean, hit obviously physical football. I mean, did you have an idea for what the letters were going to stand for? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty creative. I don't know. Uh, (laughs) um, I would say that uh, it was, you know, yeah. I just came up with it. You you talk about doing these measurements, where where you guys look at the film for the instant feedback for your. Linebacker coach, or tight end coach. Yep. What, how long does it take if you have a ninety-minute practice out there? How long does it take them to go through that film to actually assign all these grades that you're talking about? Yeah. So during practice, we don't really we don't give grades. We just coach it, you know, as we see it. But during the games, it takes a long time to grade. I mean, it takes a long time to grade because you're looking at, you know, most people just look at scheme. You know, okay, he did his job and, you know, okay, completed pass, all that. Well, we don't look at the game that way. We look at it a different way. So we have to grade those things every single play. And you have to put yourself in your position through that principle, through those foundations. And if you do that, then you're, the product will look like it's supposed to look. If you don't, let it, and let it, go, by, let it go by, and then all of a sudden it's going to creep in. Your, your team's not going to look the right way.